Hi everybody, I'm Steve Carl. I'm pretty sure this is week 16 of our live poetry series that we started when Honolulu and along with a lot of other places went into um, shelter in place law rules. Um, and here we still are and things are just as bad as ever. So. <laughs> Some places tried to open up too early. Uh, anyway, so today I'm going to read a series of 64 poems that I wrote in 1994 uh, and called uh, I Change. Um, and this work arose out of a unique set of circumstances. Um, in the spring of 1994, I was living with about five or six housemates uh, on the corner of 15th and Church Streets in San Francisco when we were given notice that they were going to be renovating our building um, and that we all had to move out while they did that. Um, so I started looking for a new place to live and asking around my friends. Uh, I had graduated from the poetics program at the New College of California the year before um, and I, I just lived a few blocks from there still so I still went and hung out uh, hung out down there every now and then they would have readings and you know people that I knew that still went there would have parties that I would go to and um, so uh, so it somehow came to my attention that the poet Giovanni Singleton who was a student at New College in the poetics program at the time uh, who had uh, gotten there after me um, and I might be able to help each other so uh, Giovanni was renting a little one-bedroom apartment near 22nd and Guerrero in the Mission District uh, which was uh, not too far from uh, the first house I had lived in when I moved to San Francisco. Um, and so she wanted to go back to Virginia for the summer that year to, to uh, stay with her folks, but she didn't want to lose her living situation. Um, so she offered to sublet it to me for three months for $500 a month, and uh, which was a lot of money for me in those days. I think I was paying $350 to split the place with the five roommates. Um, but I said, you know, I think I can cover that for three months. Um, and so, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> um, so she sublet the place to me and uh, I, had the, I had a place to myself for three months, which is the only time in my life I've ever lived by myself. And so, um, so I'm thinking like writer, right? Like I got three months of solitude and so I have to come up with something ambitious to take advantage of my, my time alone. So um, I had been, uh, I had gotten a copy of uh, the English translation of Richard Wilhelm's translation of the I Ching, uh, the Chinese book of divination. Um, and so I want to briefly explain how, uh, how the I Ching is commonly used without getting into too much detail. Um, so basically, you ask the book a question, and then you use any of several methods. Um, I threw three coins, um, with each coin having a value of two for heads and three for tails. Um, and so you throw those, and you come up with a number between six and nine. Um, and then if it's a six or an eight, that's represented by a broken line. And if it's a seven or a nine, that's represented by a solid or an unbroken line. Um, so, uh, so you throw the coins and you get a line. You do that three times and you get a set of three lines, which in English uh, is referred to as a trigram. Um, and then you do it three more times to build a second trigram on top of the first trigram. Um, and then the whole thing then is called a hexagram. Um, so there are eight possible trigrams, and each one is given a name, an attribute, an image, and a family relationship. So for example, if you get three solid lines, um, that's called the creative. And its attribute is strong, its image is heaven, and its family relationship is the father. Yes, China was already a patriarchy <laughs> at that point. <laughs> um, so I was mostly interested in the name and the image, although I did also take note of the attribute and the family relationship, and you do, those will pop up in the poems. Um, 
So in addition to the creative, the, the, uh, the trigrams are known as the receptive, uh, which is the earth, the arousing, which is thunder, the abysmal, um, which is water, keeping still, which is uh, the image of the mountain, the gentle, which has two images, which is interesting, uh, both wind and wood. Um, can be used for the gentle, uh, the clinging or fire, and the joyous, whose image is a lake, uh, not just any water like the abysmal, but um, but if it's joyous, if it's a joyous abyss, it's a lake. <laughs> so um, so there are eight possible trigrams on top and eight below. So there's a total of 64 hexagrams, um, and so the names, images, attributes, and relationships are supposed to form a metaphorical answer to the question that you asked. Um, and if you look up the hexagram in the book, um, it'll give you all of that information and um, advice from the ancient sages about um, how that, uh, you know, what that means um, and how the wise person is meant to act when this situation obtains <laughs> yeah, that's mentioned in the hexagram. Um, so now I mentioned the numbers six through nine earlier and the fact that um, that two different numbers can lead to a broken line and two different numbers lead to a solid line. Um, the six and the eight lead to different types of broken lines. Um, the eight is a stable broken line, which has a tendency to remain broken. Um, but the six is a dynamic broken line, which means that it tends to change to a solid line. Um, so when you're in a um, when you're in a situation, um, and the, the particular situation is you know um, spelled out by the coins that you throw, or you know however you get to the number, um, that um, you know that situation has a certain stability, and it will tend to change into certain other hexagrams that are um, you know that are all mapped out in the book somewhere. So. Um, so in your hexagram, you note all the lines that are derived from sixes and or nines, and, um, and there's commentary on those particular lines individually um, due to the fact that those change and form a different hexagram. So, um, so the procedure and the structure that I came up with for the poems um, was that every day after, usually after doing yoga and meditating, um, I would ask, what should I write about, and throw the coins to get a hexagram and read the commentary for that hexagram. And then I would write a six line poem um, using that hexagram as a prompt. Um, so the six lines were kind of an obvious choice because the hexagrams are made up of six lines. Um, and I made it a rule to use the name of the hexagram uh, somewhere in the poem as well as the images of the two trigrams that make it up. Um, and uh, and usually I would try to put those on the ch any changing lines that I got when I threw the coins. So um, so then I just had to figure out what to do if I got a hexagram that I'd already written about. Um, so sometimes I would follow the changing lines to see if that led to a new hexagram that I hadn't written about yet. Um, uh, later on, when uh, I ran out of those, um, I had to do things like use, um, there, there are categories that some commentators have grouped the hexagrams in, so whatever hexagram I rolled, I would look up that category and see if there were any other hexagrams in the category that I hadn't done yet, um, and I would use that one. Um, so on the 64th day, obviously I knew which one I was going to write about, but I threw the coins anyway. Um, and I didn't get that one. <laughs> uh, and there was no internally logical way to get from the one that I rolled to the one that I needed to do. So um, I just figured, what the hell? I invoked poetic license, and I just did the one I needed to do. So um, so here's the result of my three months living alone in the Mission District. I change. One, to move a way out mode of being through change. The shocking waves arousing laughter lap at the unfoldings of clouds. How transitory the drama of spring. 
How spare the spread of warming nights. The thunder first clears its candid throat, then speaks. Two, a running stand to transformation, the influence of inverted eyedropper, mountain, summit sunken, lifting lake to courtship bower, stills the will in joy and generates within a wind of eros. Three, a mountain keeping still maintains a frame of another mountain, a time-long space flight through the life of the planet plants a notion in us everywhere. Mantic mother, settle me in the back, make a nest of my nerves. Four, purples come from a place near yellow. The earthen cradled trees are pushing up, are pushing up through liquid, wind, and light. Every bee is also butterfly, but not on the same planed slice of time. The, the tree-enveloped earth is pushing up. Five. There is a rippling of the real. Creation on the lake is taking place. One more dangered era might still stand. But the youngest daughter under our sky treads lightly on the evanescent. Among the hours, she conducts the borealis. Six. One makes a move towards diffusion. A wind won't long belie another, like zephyrs gently penetrate the door jams of one's home and very storehouse. One makes a move towards suffusion. The breezes slip between the folds in one another. Seven. That sampled swallow keeps reiterating song. There, thunder on the mountain is pounding. It's every small preponderance backing static. The Stoics meet and place magnetic markers. The mountain pulls the thunder heavy. However, rearrange the height of halo. Eight. The flickering ether radiates from city air. The fluctuant eye attached another touch to fit. The clay clods spattered on the hillsides speak with modesty of beach sand sprinkled on the mountains. Primordial perfect tense of mounting exalts the ground from which once it scaled to space. Nine, what's together gathers the rest, each lake and ear atop the cavern earth where resonance received in joy leaps patterns over frozen engines. We're again engaged, a boundaried size absorbed. 10. This, though not autobiography, applies, like the youth fool tarrying at the abyss, a new unfolding interruptions misstep as a past reopens onto meander path, as the spring streaming out may rive the mountain or feed the clouds passing over slow houses. 11. To move profuses quantity. Here's entities outpour to fill full the twofold devotion where earth within earth abides it's time a flowing tide. And tied ourselves to roots umbilic, we ground on a loam of transient death. 12. My wretched elegies wrench origin from O. The lake itself lies overflowed or drowned. May be drowned in elemental April, 
A lament over limitation will blame places only shifting hydroplaned on underpins. A no can evaporate in unreconstructed nature. Thirteen. Build outward from word about wings. The heavens stack up six on six, and the seventh thought after in revision. A movement of the creative effaces a phase, current sifting created time. Each particle aligns to clue in strength. Fourteen. The grand mall of the joyous is active. The pouring of the lakes into lacunae all over. The third quid firmaments a rosy meniscus. One mouth rests laughing as the mouth below it opens. Dual wests map them one atop another. Some palatal mobility applies smile to arrive. 15. Pause for a listen with ears of sense. The thunder shelled, thurming in its fiery wrap. Its rapier and cannons across dark's dome in the way consuming equivocates union. A bigger acumen forages and finds corrosis or that carbonation bite, biting through facets. Sixteen. The great air out all power. The dollar falls in New York. Thunder arouses the sky to creation, once escalated, mounts an arc or curve. We coruscate a lot through clocked energy, a real power of the great static unwound. Seventeen. A lessening of joyousness in the still center. The lake gives up mist to mountain. The interior spaces must window the light and air as sleep dismantles the decreasing eye shades of the third daughter. A culture of meadowed forests. Ram identifications in two moves. 18. Some have hung, coming to meet hats on their heads. The wind has blown inside the sky. Some fashion graphic amazement in glyphs till the surfacing dust wears them slowly to the seas. The woods and winds penetrate creation. The skies bend down to see them. 19. An urgent seated impulse to sleep burns up the land. Who siphoned off jouissance into the abyss now will oppress an urge to symphony. Builded ruins jar the thick and smooth disaster. A lake exhausted of all water fumes unreservedly, hemmed up by rushes. 20. As foreshortening stalls significance, the thunder resting under lakes deletes a torrential artifact. Camaraderie will define us refusingly by chronic nods at a sight of the passive, and joy may follow on the froth of movement incited. 21. Returned to cylinder, a spilling pneumatic filament. An ocean of air may current across the heavens. A wind will taxi clouds around the sky. As if a ridding fit continued shrinks limits, the taming power of the small backs breaks. Refinement of road returns to tiny timid power. 22. 
While we postulate sleep into energetic dream, mountains turn ashen faces up to their creator, casting sure erasings as melodic rupture, its move the hermitage through jubilance. The strong retreat from the resting and the rest keep still under the glare of heaven. 23. A string can bridge what's strict. It's the way of flame to leap from the lake, trading places informed or unformed. Their opposition posits fuel for atmosphere, leaves clarity to cling to the joyous, to demonstrate the stations it pervades. 24. The initial relating collides without evision. Ascendant thunders in the chaos of heaving rain clouds. The throes evince the cast of coming things. How indigent the weight connects two ends. But difficulty at the beginning opens growing. The will aroused emerges of its cocoon of danger. 25. Composed but in disregard for order, the dropping rain tumbles under thunder. A deliverance from the slow muted thought transposing the moods of the head cold body. Inside the danger incites electric motion. Seed pods drink their drafts of rain and start up from underground. 26. But even rain only means missive received, cried to the skies out tongues of flame. Destiny is destination, or the way around the other? Said, the simple quivers as to melt. The question flares up to bridge the firm, accentuated lifting keys fellowship with others. 27. The wind skein breeze is wrapped around the land, drunk on contemplation over view through tree on ground. An unrecipied possibility is taken to root, its pleated parts in the creases of conceit. We crawl differently, wind up and wounded, wanting calm from the time to the fold we receive. 28. You abyss of earth, you've got the sun in your belly. You hide your candle deep beneath a whole planet. I'm biding the tide. Clarity may cling underside the giving. A darkening of the light lilts in patience. Time the tidings cast through crevices. 29. Sunken now and tamed, the mountains shrink away within the loom of flames. The lines sing over patterned filter and mean a silhouetted sense that trips, triples even. It falls blown away into travelogue. Our words themselves already wanderers from peak, pinnacle, the point. 30. Swept away by dispersion, delicately or no, a wind of what sort carries off the water. Winds gathering over water disperse ferocity. Notion of health and ontologic retrieval, a calm like breeze dissolves into an ocean of bones. Night and summer step the threshold to hearing. 31. Examine the alignment of any accidental axis. With six turns all away, the seventh turn can only be returning point. Patient au pair to the elements, 
you sit storms and sun, trading danger for a place to let sink in. A lucky act of trust for you to fall back on the levitationist. The thunder rests quite lively cargo in the traveling bag of earth. Thirty-two. We thus see duration the domain of what endures, a hermit, hermit slowly entrancing what's timeless. The bits of form congeal around it, scrabbling the reft into timelined blockade. Sounds as thunder piggyback the spreading wind, a walking order carried disassembly back to ur space. 33. Any innocence as unexpected is lightly set. Underneath the sky, the thunder plays it rough. Through every scheme, each amount's conserved. You watch as let the lines connect, beginning making rolling. Aspiration aroused by and creates enthusiasm. Thirty-four. The hills have swallowed fire to breathe it forth, filled a raft of drifting life with grace almost all out of our psychic limits, sorry, our physic limits. Only while we sleep can we create speech. The foothills flicker wreathed with candle. Sense excruciates by rose and lotus voltages. 35. First memories decay into tears, then work on what has been spoiled. A wind got trapped in the mountain's smothering cavities. The bird with its bad leg landed and pitched forward. The voice broke me open at the skin of human community. The bird pitched forward under moving cars, tires. The spill tears take. 36. The hover of thunder lakes the countryside, the side of the land, its lacunae sound signed in thunder. Media meditation. Will her trains transmit any ergonomic joy arcing off the marrying maiden? If an undercommunicated hint hangs between, no Nero may intimate what history lies down next. <clears throat> 37. As the graceful flora flood the plain, the wind increased by thunder blows largely. The thunderous woods pelt leaf over seed. All thriven kids go motion on the increase. Another thunder has more wind outside all same. Wind sneaks thunder across a forest. 38. The hills have hidden heaven. The power of the great keeping still tames creator. This is the taming power of the great. A roll to 18 score would re-suffice if the case of curative quiet coiled in. In adrenaline breathed deeply, the great spreads taming power. 39. Twin motions dissolve a field of metaphysics. Is heaven entirely without earth? The instinct for territory capsuled into narrative fails to anesthetize the cataclysmic finesse. The sky uproots itself and looms away as earth sinks underground. The horizon stands stagnant, stretched still. 40. The mind hears notice, ember of the embryo, Fire ups wind to whip it hot spread out. The family sides all through like shots. 
the clan is incredible atrophy of militant instant. Blazes blow up wind in symbiokinesis. See where this is leading momenter like chemical pyre. 41. Thunder is thrust from the mountain's foundation. Thrown thunder kindles motion in the hillside. The corners of the mouth twirl and pirouette. Pike's peak, for one, swaps equilibrium's plug and plunges us into flight, gathering spring, providing nourishment in the new spark of white heat. Forty-two. Is there only want and waste to waiting? Water hangs atop to the heavens, not liquid this high, but clouded, precipitous. Create this word, this close to danger, and you can stand it in strange stead where the breath of life seen as steam obscures a distraction. 43. That chasmal joint that never fails, this water on that other falls. Ape away through the abysmal notation. Like it, you'll flow all over gorge rims. Water through and through and such. Deep in itself, wetting danger it sustains. 44. Llega la luz de la luna y empieza. Thunder and lightning reverse servers and reprise. This eve of air collects nine respites and in abundance spills verano verde. Vasted sparklers starring up the sky. La noche sueña antes abstraction. Claro? Pardon my pronunciation. 45. Flame's base clings wetly to wood. The wind might feed up whole forests to fire. A great caressence newly seen, its description brewed at last in the concentrating cauldron. Now always permuted when lucid or less. The fog is falling, fallen, is notes from a flute. 46. The lake will likely vaporate the skies, and skies will then drip down with the lakes in scoop. Resoluteness occupies a breakthrough regardless relegates older keys to chronologic locks. Our inveterate progression foreshortens, catapulting chance's apprentice evolution. 47. Molting as the politic mammal voices, the lake insofar as it swallowed a flaming sword Contention of a grapheme being to locate the mean. As much as to say what I ever have desired runs counter to clock wisdom inflect. Never a revolution lacking in steam sights. 48. A conflicted press of motions caress each moment. The sky reflected in the lake comes no closer. Perfect haiku slipped into a lapse of attention and only jasmine exhaust ever presenced. Another couplet strains like taffy to cohere in rhyme what kilters off as spoke. 49. Enthusiasm fulls up as Godhead tornado. 
I as much like to the earth as bounds elevations. The thunderhead sprouts off my undergrounded body. Think thunder and the sight is of lightning. Yes, it is. The dance of the thunder, L lightning. Her husbanded enthusiasm lifts to the stormer. 50. The quiet danger flows past by subversive turns. The rose blooms underneath the caverned earth and unprepared to grant it healthy growth. The water steeped inside the ground is arming it. Below the impulse to yield lays the abyss. Or the abyss. I can never decide whether to, which way to pronounce that. 51. Possession in great measure may not guarantee placement. The sky-fueled fire fills flames uh, across the sky. We have never flown for want of falling. Have is all verbose and emptiness. Blow the flames of creation over all this and blanket secret crestings within yourself. Fifty-two. Our shallow challenges puddle in every instant. Floods fill Earth's pores to the last generation. Phases processed into onward passing lineals. As the latest hunger wakes to each next day, what residue of glue to hold together unions remains? A scribble early, quick, then off again. 53. Acts as a catalyst to cataractics. Obstruction dams the snowmelt movement down mountains. To learn itself a turn upon impermanence. Not a name escapes the change of epochs. Cinematic equivalent is slowing to a melt under bulb. Keep stilling toward an overflow up and sourcing down. 54. Throne of the seated sun, a lengthening of the light. The dew alights atop the wood leaves, a resident. Punctual seasons take their stations in echoes. Conjures up encyclicals of water from the well. All the while, fewer drawers calibrate it. The centrality of the well is motif to the willowy rushes. 55. We note here that the earth bases all mountains. The splitting apart of the ore imagines a find. Then one final C takes a portion of a lot. Any ultimate refraction would brace the tension of sunken air along the altitudes, gripped by soft wrapped tremors of attentive ferment. 56. How much is proceed to go before or pass? Development, gradual progress, motions over us to pick out treeful mountains topped on top with more frugal rapids to forward. Its progress is developmental gradations, the code, mountains, water, fire, wind. 57. The flames cry Earth's tears, messaging them to heaven. The rain's soft love-made response is progress. A scaffolding of tree and cloud might suffice for us. Only fire lifts transcendent light from the earth. 
sky's crescent shape, nurturing balance, holds the constellations in their pinwheel buffers. Fifty-eight. The mostly ordered sequential going into the day jitters the journey at a literal level. We center tuned to E at oracular Maya. Crossed reticences revel sadly in each other's wake. The structure, balanced rain and fire, after completion salves short mourning. There's another attempted lament. Fifty-nine. The empty center, unthirsty and unbarren, nonetheless ripples when breath stirs it. A lake when inner truth blows wind. A dark joy in inner truth's time of penetration. Flux is the feelings of the transitant. Faith, the unloaded word in necessity's face. Sixty. At hand, the term of firmness to yield to organism or the moted lure. Fear of amnesiac exile to come over. Envelop the seed and shoot for growing season. The approaching earth soaks up the lake in its aspect as actor. The joyous aroused into outer space, the true receptive earth. Sixty-one. One light clings like day in Klieg jeweled night. If one flame burns another for fuel, every false face might fall away in mere metaphor. But the heartage taken, firmed up in compassion, allows each fire to feed its partnered fire, to part to the time, at the appropriate hour to penetrate heaven in joyous devour. 62. A roiling motion portends to really threshold. The fire finds abode in the skies and water wears down its beds, but yet incomplete things are withholding them before completion accomplishes that splash of compassion, one's compass must rest at N. Lightened your stillness pulse starts. 63. Unneeded and ignorance of bodies terrestrial, but only transform, avoid damage our marriage to reality. Any gentle lilt to the next age will lift a joy. The great preponderates and pulls away another. Depth floods in like lake surrounds a tree. A vital slog under preponderation is, and the powerful. And 64. Pensive and wary periodicity enlarges to engage slowed peace. The planet falls unto its heaven. Such temporal imprimatur wore peace toward yet. We temperament a reading to pieces past, but receive in swoons creations blending ground sky, bursts all premature times, now holes forever present. Thank you. Thank you. So after I finished writing these, I started sending them out to all the literary journals I thought might be interested in them. Um, and I got about half of them uh, accepted, spread across 10 small different small press journals. Um, it was too large a work to fit into the chat book format. Um, and it's more expensive to do a bound edition. So publishing it myself wasn't really a viable option in those days um, before uh, print on demand was a thing. Um, my fantasy was to get somebody to design a set of postcards 
Um, and we would put uh, a, a poem on one side of each postcard and a, a, a piece of artwork on the back um, and then sell them in a little ornate box, um, which would have been even more expensive. <laughs> um, so what finally happened was uh, my friends and I on the Subpoetics uh, email um, discussion list formed a, a publishing collective um, and we each kicked in 1% of our gross income, uh, annual income for, uh, uh, per year for three years. And we used that as um, startup money. Um, and then each of us got to edit one book. And, um, you know, we, uh, we kept that rolling um, after the three years was up. Um, uh, and by that time, by the time my, my turn came up, um, my friend Bill Marsh had written a sequence of poems based on another book of ancient Chinese wisdom called the Tao Te Ching. Uh, and his book was called Tao Drops. Um, and it was in a similar format to I Change. So I thought, well, why not publish two books for the price of one? Um, and I proposed to Bill that we collaboratively edit our manuscripts together um, so that they form an interwoven text. Um, and Bill agreed. And um, so we worked on that for several months and the result was titled Dow Drops I Change and it was published by Subpress in late 2003 or early 2004 I forget when exactly we got back the thing um, but that's still available from small press distribution um, or you can hit me up in a private message um, the reason I didn't read the uh, the reason I didn't read directly from this text um, today was because um, in order to interweave the text, we had to um, we had to take them out of order from the from the original order that he had his in and the original order that I had mine in. So, um, as a separate text, um, I felt it made more sense to read mine in the order that it was written. So, um, so um, this week's question. It's from Dan. As you are putting together these readings, no doubt you are revisiting a number of pieces for the first time in ages and probably for the first time since some were written or published. Any thoughts about them overall or individually looking back from the perspective of a quarter century or so later? Um, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting. It's been kind of trippy, actually. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, some of, them, some of these I haven't read in, in ages. Um, the uh, the interesting thing about them is that they they still sound like me, <laughs> even even going back this far. These are going back 26 years now, um, and you know a lot of them I, I I have to rehearse them before I can read them out loud because I, they're they're you know they're unfamiliar to me when I first read them. So I have to make sure that I've you know read through them again carefully before I do them on the, at these readings or otherwise I would just be completely lost trying to, trying to read through them. Um, and I'm still making mistakes, <laughs> which is fine. But, um, but yeah, the, the, the interesting thing is that they, they do sound like my voice, but they don't sound, they don't sound like the, what I'm writing now. Um, they just kind of sound like me, but a slightly, a slightly less developed or a slightly different me, you know? Um, and uh, I, I am starting to more frequently come across ones that um, that I, you know, um, look at and I just say, I can't figure out what this is doing, you know, <laughs> like why I considered this a finished poem or what I thought was interesting about it at the time. Um, so there are there are a few that I'm rejecting for these uh, for these readings, but surprisingly few given the given the age. So. Um, and again, I fully expect that as, as I continue further back, I'm going to reach a point where I just like, I can't read any of these. These are 16-year-old <laughs> Steve or 24-year-old Steve or whatever was an idiot. You know, I can't read these or whatever. So, um, but um, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm actually kind of grateful that it, it hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> I can actually, you know. Kind of look back and, and uh, think like okay there was something something was going on there even that early in my life so um you know not to blow my own horn too much or anything but um so yeah <laughs> after five minutes of blowing his own horn <laughs> 
So I think that's all the questions. Um, so yeah, so that's it for this week. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I certainly did. And um, we'll see you next week, probably. Everybody take care. Love you all. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>